everyone, welcome to my space here. This is going to be the extended reading for the weekly reading, my Tarot Tuesday weekly um, energy update for the week of October 6th through the 13th. And um, I would like to remind you that to trust your own guidance above all else. And if you would like to check out the blog, I'll leave that information below because there might be more messages there for you. Um, if you read the blog, thank you for being here. And if you just happen to find this, then trust that this is divine timing and that you're meant to receive these messages. I intend for it to be for that week, but if you come across this at any time, just know that these messages are for you. So trust and receive. And um, I like also like to remind you that gender does not apply here. So sometimes I use like he or she or masculine and feminine. Um, but yes, gender does not apply. We both have masculine and feminine energies within us. This um, inside of each and every one of us. So <laughs> it's just an energy that we tap into. So I did, um, I do have some like roses here and I'm really focusing on embodying the energy of love this week with the Queen of Cups. So I'll be featuring um, more guidance about self-love this week to focus on our emotional, our emotional bodies, our emotional selves. And it was perfect because the card that I pulled for this week is um, the Ten of Cups. So it was a, um, it was even a cup card that was pulled for this week. So I love that. And the Ten of Cups is such a great feeling of like hope and like Traditionally on the card, uh, the tarot card, there's like a rainbow and like a family. So this card always represents like family, happy family, feeling really, it's like the emotional aspect of it. So feeling very loving. It's like um, feeling that, you know, very, just very um, supportive and emotionally supportive is what I was picking up this week. It's like feeling very loved, feeling accepted, feeling seen, heard, and accepted. That's like our inner child. And you can kind of think of our emotional selves, our emotional body as like our inner child. So there's this need this week to be really gentle towards ourselves and really kind and loving. And we may have not been taught how to do this and we may have grown up in families where, is what I was picking up on, where we, we weren't taught how to love ourselves unconditionally. Like we were only loved if, we'd be, if we were really good that day. You know, like if we behaved really good, then we were rewarded. And you know, then you, then, but when you were behaving bad, you were punished, you know? So that's not unconditional love. That's, <laughs> you know, you're um, creating this, um, there's this energy of like feeling fragmented within yourself. So there's this ener energy that I loved of like going in search of this buried treasure. And there's just like a lot of emotional energy. There's a lot of feminine energy. And that's why I've also invited the roses because I really love working with roses when I'm feeling very emotional or, you know, um, going through different cycles, um, like within our body, like, and there's this period of rest and this time of like gentle to gentleness and like this very receptive energy like kind of think of like the mother's womb and kind of going back to that that sense of being like supported and held and nurtured and nourished <laughs> and we had to really learn how to support ourselves in that way because maybe we didn't have mothers that taught us how to be very gentle and loving and kind and compassionate towards ourselves maybe we had really harsh or critical mothers that were very judgmental of themselves very judgmental of other people, you know, and so this made you be really harsh on yourself or, you know, very judgmental towards your own self. So there's this energy of like, kind of gaslighting yourself or like, you know, because like when we were manipulated as ch children, we only learned how to receive when we were behaving in a certain way. So we began to put on like this mask almost, right, to, we would behave in certain ways in order to get what we need in order to have our needs met, you know, even if it meant abandoning who we truly are. And I pulled to clarify the trust your own understanding. And I love that because she has a mask right there on her face that she's kind of like taking up, taking off. And she's rising up above um, like the land there and she's surveying the land. And she has all this support I love with like all the planets and um, there's butterflies. So that might be a message for you. There's like a crescent moon on her earring. And I love like there's these big like angel wings um, or even bird wings that are flying above her with her. So like protecting, I'm getting this energy of like protection. And a lot of times, you know, maybe we didn't feel protected in our homes. Maybe our homes didn't feel safe and loving, you know? <laughs> like maybe our homes didn't feel filled with love. And that's what I'm picking up on. There's still this contrasting energy because we're like meeting our shadow. So I was picking up on like abandonment wounds and feeling very neglected. And just like, I was picking up on like daddy issues. And when you have fathers that are emotionally unavailable, like you're gonna attract somebody in your intimate relationships when you're an adult where, you know, you're with somebody who can't support you emotionally or can't, you know, you know, it, there's not this like loving, <laughs> gentle feeling because we attract people in our adult relationships to teach us how to heal our, you know, 
deepest wounds we have with our first relationship we ever have which is with our parents so if we can heal that like wound and sometimes this wounding isn't really bad sometimes our fathers were just emotionally withdrawn and distant you know maybe they weren't horrible or awful but maybe they couldn't be there for you emotionally or you know there's this energy of like um this in and out energy of like uh this back and forth energy they may um, have been really unstable emotionally so one day they were super happy and everything was fine but then the next day they were like on edge and super angry so this made you go into this state of like hyper vigilance where you are on this hyper sensitivity of learning to predict your parents behavioral patterns so that you can um, you know protect yourself emotionally so you can know when you know you can watch their every move so that you can predict when they're gonna you know um, <laughs> when they're gonna shift their emotions, you know, and so this becomes makes you become very hypersensitive and you can be very defensive in relationships. You can be like emotionally and verbally like aggressive um, or you can be like super withdrawn and just, you know, are completely mentally gone and like aren't able, to, you're not responsive, right? <laughs> so this can teach us how to like, this just teaches us how to abandon or run away from ourselves. But we're really going in search of that buried treasure and digging deep within ourselves to to find those little aspects of ourselves that we buried away because our you know they weren't accepted right and so we had to hide parts of ourselves in order to um receive love so we learned how to abandon ourselves in order to receive love so we'll do this in our adult relationships <laughs> and then we'll feel this sense of resentment and anger and think of the heart chakra this week like think of like feeling very loving and compassionate and forgiving but also the the darker end, end, end of the heart chakra is anger and resentment and like feeling very like you know like there's this energy of like manipulation and like if you had like narcissistic mothers that put you down or like that you know just emotionally you know uh, abused you then you have to learn how to <laughs> meet those needs for yourself now to how to be really gentle towards yourself when you're feeling sad can you learn how to support yourself and make yourself feel better and feel comforted and loved and I was picking up on like emotional eating disorders and like binge eating and that's something that I really struggled with that I still struggle with to this day and the only difference now is that I don't shame myself I learn how to, you know, tend to myself in a new way instead of like beating myself up for overeating. I go and like I do some yoga or I just sit with my body or I just be with my body or I just touch my belly and I just like extend myself for forgiveness by literally, you know, talking out loud to my body and saying, you know, like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to punish you. Like, I'll do better next time. And then you just tell yourself that, you know, and <laughs> there's this energy because I'm picking up with the Queen of Cups. I love the Queen of Cups because she teaches us how to be like sweet and gentle and connects us to our intuition. And she teaches us how to flow and how to surrender and as picking up on the energy of the mermaids too. So like, um, there's this really deep healing with like learning how to be compassionate when we're, you know, see when we're uh, seeking or we're craving like sweets, like watch yourself with this, like, and this is the thing she's kind of like observing back here, you know, just watch yourself gently and compassionately as you behave in these patterns. So when you find yourself needing some comfort or like if you're feeling stressed, like stress eating, so you're fine, you're wanting some comfort. And so you want to go to the, you know, the cupboard and then you want to go for something really sweet, maybe whatever it is for you, you know, or carbs, you know, cause that's another form of like, sweet so when you want to reach for those carbs or their sugars you know and um really recognizing that what you need is something sweet maybe you're talking to yourself really harshly or you're putting yourself down you know so instead of running away from that and wanting to soothe yourself with the food you start to talk to yourself kind of like you start to build yourself up and talk to yourself really kindly and compassionately like i love you you're beautiful and sometimes we're gonna have really hard days where we like are struggling mentally and we're struggling emotionally but it's how we show up on those days like a loving mother you know shows up for you and if you didn't have those you know loving some of us didn't have like super loving mothers that were able to support us emotionally because they weren't able to support themselves emotionally and nobody ever taught them how to do it so what we have to really learn how to do is do it for ourselves and so I'm like the queen of self-soothing <laughs> I'm all for self-soothing I have been self-soothing myself for a really long time and I just have learned n new ways to do that especially in ways that are healthy right because at one time overeating was a way that I would self-soothe it would help me feel you know comforted and relaxed and so every time I do it I have to see that okay this is a long learned habit and pattern of a way that I made myself feel safe as a way that I survived as a child you know so you have to st extend yourself then compassion because that's also the queen of cups she's the most compassionate queen and she's gentle and she's nurturing and she's loving and she helps us heal our hearts and like mother mary she's another great ascended master to work with to help you heal your heart so if you feel called to her she's great for helping you feel comforted and relaxed and her energy is just beautiful if you could practice like 
um, inviting her in by creating a sacred space, even something just like this in one little part of your room. Maybe it's even just a yoga mat and taking that time and that space for yourself to feel really like full of love, like give yourself so much love and, you know, just be with yourself and be with your body. You know, we have so much um, shame and so much, <laughs> you know, so much like, especially maybe in childhood, if you experience like um, abuse in any way, like you have a lot of um, shame towards your body, like maybe you were like physically abused or sexually abused, all those different things, emotions can come up when we sit with our bodies because our memories and our emotions are stored in our bodies. And so it's really important to form that healthy relationship with your body because then you don't abuse it or punish it by like overeating or, and then when you do though, you have to be compassionate towards yourself because you are going to do it and it's going to be okay because you're human and you're allowed to, you know, do those things. You can't, can't beat yourself up anymore. We're just not beating ourselves up anymore. Now we're, you know, inviting in this energy of the Queen of Cups and we're being gentle and kind and compassionate towards ourselves and we're seeing ourselves as like this beautiful child, you know, and this just helps you to, one, reparent yourself and to make your inner child feel seen and heard and accepted. And that's what all of us are searching for. Every human being on earth is searching for that feeling. But a lot of times we place that need on somebody else to make us feel fulfilled. And what we have to really learn how to do is, you know, provide it for ourselves. And then we feel really, you know, we feel really supported. And when we feel really supported by our emotions, then we start to see that in our external world. And we're starting to see support everywhere. And we're like, oh my gosh, I can't you know, you can't believe it. You know, at one time you felt so abandoned and you felt so alone and now you're feeling so supported because you're connected to that part of you that's, you know, guiding you that's endless, you know. So um, to the to feeling aspect, the sensation and just being able to connect to that part of you will help you feel actually really more stable. <laughs> Even though it's fluid and it's, you know, like the, the water aspect and that's the element we're kind of working with, like it's but it also carries you too, right? So it's that sense of support, but it's also guiding you. And sometimes you have to just surrender, relax, flow, and trust that it's taking you in the you know, right direction. But that's kind of the issue in my opinion is we all have a lot of trust issues. <laughs> and we're always second guessing ourselves. We're you know, second guessing our hearts because we've been taught that our hearts and our emotions aren't valuable. And then so we don't, take the, we don't carve out the time to be with our hearts and actually listen to them. And in order to listen to our hearts, we kind of have to get quiet. We have to sit with our bodies and we have to sit still. So it's like, how can you, you know, and especially I love that there's little kids on here, little baby jellyfish, you know, because it's like <laughs> a big family, you know, like, and being able to like, um, you know, rein all those different aspects of yourself in and being able to make yourself sit here, your mind's going to wander in 500 different directions, you know, like to go to your to-do list and to do all these things is going to distract you because it doesn't want to sit with itself. But can you like discipline yourself by making yourself just be still? So it's incorporating that masculine and that feminine energy of, you know, that discipline energy of devoting to sitting here and just sitting here and knowing that that time is valuable, that the time to surrender and the time to rest and the time to, um, like, let go is valuable. You have to trust those, those moments as much as you trust the, um, you know, the doing and the action taking. You have to trust that sometimes you're meant to rest, you're meant to surrender, you're meant to take a break, you're meant to slow down. <laughs> so create that space for yourself so that you can feel very... I know a lot of us don't allow ourselves to cry, so um, Spirit is saying definitely take the time to allow yourself to <laughs> um, let it out in whatever way you can. Maybe you can do this through different sorts of creativity. They're saying like just um, kind of get back to what you love. What did your inner child love to do? How do you like to express yourself? Like writing, like, <laughs> you know, painting, any like forms of art. You know, there's lots of different therapeutic things that can allow you to channel your emotions so that you can feel more like you're flowing because when we feel stuck it's because our emotions are stuck so lots of emotional healing this week so if you feel like sad or lonely or depressed or angry this week too like feel all those emotions but if you're feeling excited and happy and like trusting trust those too like you can have both you can be you can be all the emotions you can be all you know you can be the rainbow because traditionally there's a rainbow on this card but you can be all them like the heart is multifaceted and when we connect to our hearts we connect to all these different aspects of ourselves and then we start to feel whole again. We start to feel full again. And we're like, yes, you know. And then we recognize we don't need anything outside of us in order to create the sense of fulfillment that we can create it all by ourselves. And that's powerful. <laughs> okay, so let's get what's going on behind the scenes this week. Yay, I love the, the cups. I'm working with the Queen of Cups. is really wonderful for embody embodying the energy of love. Um, and it's different from like romantic love and one thing that <laughs> I'm being guided to is that like I haven't been I'm not here to like teach um, 
romantic love necessarily, but I'm going to because I love romantic love and I'm definitely a romantic, but it's more about unconditional love and how to love yourself unconditionally. Like even in your hardest times being the most loving towards yourself instead of like abandoning yourself or running away from yourself. So it's kind of the journey of unconditional love and like self-compassion. And yeah, but sometimes we can misinterpret love for, you know, for just like, I don't know, a lot of people will settle rather than just like having like this deep intimate love. And what we're learning this week is diving deep, like learning how to breathe underwater, like being able to sit with our emotions and not be like suffocated by them, but like, you know, allow them to, <laughs> to um, teach us how to be resilient and to um, connect with a deeper part of us. Like we're diving deep, like, cause especially our, our society is very shallow and we're very service level. You know, we're focused mostly on like the outside, but like we're really learning how to dive a little bit deeper <laughs> and go a little bit deeper. And it can be a little bit like intimidating if you're not used to that, you know, especially um, we've been taught to kind of disregard this part of ourselves for a really long time. So it can make it feel a little bit intimidating, but you have to approach it from this place of like sense, of, like the sense of adventure, like you're, you're uncovering buried treasure. So I am going to create a meditation so you can find that also here on my YouTube channel or also on the blog. I'll link it there as well. So we're going to uncover some buried treasure. I'll help you just kind of learn how to like sit with yourself and then we'll just, you know, dive a little bit deeper in. So that will help you to feel, you know, you know, recover a part of yourself. And then, you know, it's just waiting for you to make it shine and then you just feel more connected to who you are. And sometimes like our energy, I feel like so many people's energy is like fragmented and it's like everywhere. <laughs> And so, anyway, it'll help you come back and kind of, you know, clear away so you can see all the treasure that you have that's right here within you at any given time. <laughs> you don't need anything outside of you to fulfill you. All right, so what's going on that we're not seeing clearly, Spirit? Okay, yes, Five of Swords. Very interesting. This is very, not very good energy. <laughs> not that I like to say good or bad. It's just a very harsh energy. But I like that the interpretation on this card is of, of a porcupine. And there's just some vines and some flowers. I really like that interpretation. Um, because the Five of Swords represents kind of this energy of like letting go of the need to be right. Um, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of like making peace with the past, but it might be like a, a like a bittersweet feeling. Like, I don't know, I'm picking up on this energy of like humility, which I love with the energy of the, <laughs> the Queen of Cups. It's very like, um, you know, it drops you back into your heart space and it helps you kind of like, cause this is like an energy of pride or ego or yeah, just like kind of wanting to be right at all costs, no matter who you hurt in the process, you know, like you're just, I don't know, just kind of this, yeah, let's get one more there actually. <laughs> what else with the five of swords spirit that we're not seeing clearly? Okay. Yes. Page of wands. That's, um, the energy of like staying optimistic. That's kind of, that could be kind of a healing energy with the Five of um, Swords because it could feel like this energy of like, traditionally the Five of Swords is like this energy of like this battle. And like I was saying though, especially if we've grown up in homes where like we've learned that love is like, you know, battling, like getting the last word in or like, I don't know, I'm picking up on energies of like comparison or competition or like, I don't know, there's just this energy of like, harshness. You can even see like the pricks, you know, <laughs> the porcupines, you know, like just feeling very kind of like prickly, like not feeling very like warm and fuzzy, right? It's feeling this energy of like, stay the fuck away from me. Like, <laughs> like I will stab you with these little porcupines. Like that's the energy that I'm feeling. <laughs> oh, I love that with the page of wands though, because it's kind of like laughing, like learn to laugh at your like little prickly things. Like the, you know, when you want to, you know, Learn how to extend yourself forgiveness in those times where you want to be kind of prickly or you want to be kind of like vengeful or you want to be kind of hurtful or you want to be kind of like prideful and you want to be, you know, look, just observe yourself in those moments and when you want to be like that <laughs> instead of like, um, you know, like, I don't know, hurting people, especially with the swords because it's like kind of communication with like how you speak towards people or especially how you speak towards yourself instead of being that way kind of towards yourself, um, like prickly towards yourself, like. <laughs> learn how to be more like the page of wands is kind of like learn teaching you how to be more optimistic and to meet those like prickly 
you know, voices with this sense of, like, you know, you can even see he's kind of, like, dancing here. How cute. <laughs> Little Jiminy Cricket. Um, so just, like, meeting those, like, those harshness, those harsh voices, maybe so with this, like, sense of, like, <laughs> playfulness or this sense of um, lightheartedness. That's the kind of Page of Wands energy I'm getting there, like, um, and even the Page of Wands could be this energy of, like, adventure. So just, like, seeing those these parts of you that want to be like this, that kind of want to be prickly towards people from this, like, okay, why am I like this? You know, like, getting more curious about why am I behaving in this way so that I can, you know, then you can, like, begin to heal it and you begin to, like, shift your perspective. <laughs> and, um, because a lot of us were taught maybe to be very pessimistic, like I was saying, or kind of, like, judgmental towards ourselves. And so... This is like learning how to be more, um, you know, optimistic about like who you are and what you can be. So that's what I'm picking up there. Very interesting. Let's get a clarifier here. What are we not seeing clearly with the Five of Swords and Page of Wands? It's kind of like opposing energies. But we're picking up on that a lot, especially it's Libra season though too, still. Like balancing those energies within us. Okay, yeah, fresh approach number three. There's more rainbow on here. Beautiful card, but to me it feels like, yeah, approaching this from like, instead of approaching situations from like this need to be right, approaching them from this place, where can I learn more about myself from this? You know, like where can I, and that's kind of the page of wands, is like seeing it from a more adventurous perspective, in my opinion. <laughs> instead of this, this energy of I'm right and you're wrong, you know? Maybe you grew up in a home, like, where your um, family was like that, like, they, your beliefs, especially because it's the swords, like, your beliefs, like, this is right and this is wrong. And, like, if you do this, you're bad. If you do this, you're right, you know? Like, getting more curious about your belief systems will have you, you know, expand and mentally, and then you'll be able, when you, like, see things or, you know, instead of judging them, you just view them as, um another person's, you know, that's their own coping mechanisms and their own ways of living and their own ways of doing things, that it's not wrong because it's not the same way as you, you know, like, it's just this energy of being more open-mindedness, I think, and that's what the fresh approach is, like, seeing things, and there's lots of animals on this card, um, I see lions and cheetahs and zebras and elephants, um, there's butterflies and a peacock, which I love because that's like the pride and the ego. Instead of approaching it from pride and ego, how can you approach it from the heart? Is pretty much a more simple way of saying it. Um, there's like antelope and parrots and um, I don't know, like little muskrats and flamingos and penguins. <laughs> oh, lots of different animals. I love that. Um, oh, there are little fish down here too. I love that. There's some dolphins, so I like that we got some ocean animals here because I was picking that up in the the channeled message I did for my blog. So yeah, there's this need of approaching it from this place of feeling more centered. You can even see on here she looks more centered and grounded, and there's like even this big tree coming out of her head, like your the information, like your intuitive um, messages that you're receiving are, you know, grounded, and there's water, I love that, even flowing through her, through the, there's a waterfall that might be a message for you, and I think that is a full moon too, so that might be another message for you, but if not, there's, it kind of looks like a bubble, or it kind of even looks like earth too, from like a very far away, so maybe like, it's more of an, another energy of like, needing to take a step back, connect with like, this primal aspect of you, this animal part of you that's like, you know, channel your emotions, feel all your emotions, because when we don't, feel our emotions, in my opinion, we get this kind of five of swords energy, and like, we're just kind of like, uh, we're just kind of bitter, so if you notice that you're bitter in any aspect of your life about anything, and you're just very bitter about something, um, you know, ask yourself why, and how can you make yourself feel more, um, hopeful, approach it from a different perspective, from a fresh approach, and number three, like I said, three might be a message for you, or five, um, okay, let's move on to the advice for this week. What is your advice for us, Spirit? Okay, I love it. The world. 
And I was feeling, I, yeah, I definitely saw the world in that last card too. Number 21 or 3 again, and that, the Fresh Approach card was 21 as well too, so that's cool. Um, I love all the colors on here, there's more um, butterflies, but the world to me is always like the completion of a cycle, like something coming to like fruition, something coming, something completing. Um, I could just feel this sense of like wholeness or this sense of, um, I don't know, it could feel like an ending or a beginning, either or in my opinion. Um, but it's just this feeling of, you, also I'm picking up on that you might feel called to work, um, you know, in regards to the or world or feeling really deeply connected to the earth or like, I don't know, if your mission is, you know, for the earth, like just feeling really connected to the earth, that's something I'm picking up on. So like you might be a humanitarian or feel called to be, be of service somehow, that's what I was picking up on with the world. Um, Yeah, I want to get another one there too, actually. What else with the world spirit? What's your advice there? Okay, yes. Okay, we have another major icon of judgment, number 20. And I like that there's a mouse on this card on the top of that mountain looking up at the sun. And to me, the card of... Okay, I feel, feel like this... It's this completion of... Remember, I was feeling this energy of, like, being really hard on yourself, which could make you feel very bitter. And, like, if you're hard on yourself, you're going to be hard on other people, you know? Like, you're just going to... Um, I don't know, I just feel like this energy of somebody being very prickly, like just not, um, not like <laughs> welcoming or, you know, and we're learning how to have this more energy of this, like this affection, this sweetness, this gentleness towards us, you know, if we weren't taught to be gentle towards ourselves, we're going to be a little bit prickly and defensive and hard. So if we're wanting to attract more love that's gentle and soft, then we have to learn how to become a little bit more softer on ourselves, gentle with ourselves, compassion. That's what the Queen of Cups is going to teach us, you know, to be so gentle towards ourselves because, you know, otherwise we're just so judgmental and that's kind of the card of judgment in my opinion. Like, where are you judging yourself? And I feel like with the world and judgment coming together, it's like you're learning, you know, to rise, you know, kind of rise above and not see yourself, you know, so harshly. But it's like this energy of learning how to see yourself as, you know, as God would or as, you know, your angels would, or as your guides would, or as your highest self would, and really learning how to, and I love the pink card on this card too, because it's just like, I was feeling that, it doesn't really show up pink on here, I guess, but <laughs> it's really pink here, and it feels um, connected to uh, this energy of compassion, and I always connect with like Quan Yin as a way to feel very like compassionate and loving towards myself, so, you know, just connecting with the water, um, drinking lots of water, taking like salt baths, like I love to take salt baths and you know I ha love to have my roses with me and you know candles and just make it really relaxing and soothing for myself and um, you know then I you know it's like in those moments you let go of those judgments and you know like you just feel this sense of you know relaxation and the sense of support you just feel like oh yes like you're held especially connecting with the water right it's like connecting with that womb energy and just feeling like oh carried and and gentle and when we're easier on ourselves and more gentle with ourselves that's what we're going to be that way you know towards our children and towards you know our partners okay but let's get a oracle card then i have a journey of love card i'll pull for the end what is your advice this week okay contemplation number 29 or 11 more lions on this card. So you could be connecting to this energy of the lions, or I've been feeling this sea lion energy a lot. Um, just like that primal energy I was saying, like connect to that energy as a way to channel your emotions. Instead of like, sometimes our emotions will build up and we'll feel this uh, energy of, you know, like because our needs aren't being met, we're not asking for our needs to be met. And so we're kind of like, um, you know, we're suffering, but we won't let anyone help us at the same time because we've been taught to neglect ourselves right emotionally and as children instead of being supported when we would have you know lows we would be you know sent to our rooms or sometimes even hit for like expressing emotions or you know like just you know pushed away so we weren't supported <laughs> and so instead of doing that we're gonna you know and we can tend to overthink so be careful with the contemplation card in my opinion is like make sure you're channeling your emotions and you're not getting too 
um, caught up in your mind. You know, you're not overthinking or creating like analysis paralysis, but you're channeling your emotions through that primal energy of like when you're feeling angry or you're feeling frustrated or you're feeling stuck, how can you, you know, free yourself mentally? How can you get out of your mind, right? And get back into your body. So, you know, ground yourself, connect with your body in some way, whether it's through yoga, whether it's through dance or going through a walk in nature or through breath work or through meditation or whatever it is, li just listening to music or self-massage, any of those things can get you out of your mind, your overthinking mind, and come back into your heart space that will guide you. So, contemplation is good, but make sure it doesn't go into the point of, you know, overthinking. That's all I'm getting there. So when you start to get, like, judgmental of things or situations, or you get second-guessy, or you start, like, feeling kind of stuck or trapped in some way, that's how you know you've, you know, you're caught up in the thinking mind and you need to ground yourself again and come back in your body. Maybe you just connect with your breath. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Yes, then underneath, I love this, because underneath the deck is intuition, and that's all, the Queen of Cups is like the, the cups, or the, the Queen of Intuition, right? She follows her intuition, she follows her emotions, our emotions are our internal guidance system that guide us, you know, intuitively. Lots, lots of animals on this card too, polar bears, more penguins, um, birds, swans, flamingos, foxes, cranes, um, badgers, bunnies. <laughs> Oh my gosh, speaking of bunnies, I definitely saw a dead bunny. And, oh my gosh, I was going to say that with the mouse too, because I saw a dead mouse. But I also, within the same day, saw um, a black cat, and I saw um, a monarch butterfly. It basically, like, touched me. It was the coolest thing. It was a cool experience. But anyway, in those same days, I saw two dead animals, but two really alive and transformative animals. So, <laughs> and that's cool. The cats came through too. Um, but there's pandas, there is wolves, I think I might have already said that, bears, elk, horses, um, zebras again, lions, tigers, rams, koalas, giraffes, lots of more butterflies, uh, monkeys. Yes, I love that. I love when lots of animals come through. <laughs> yeah, there's even a walrus on here too. Oh my gosh, I love that. How cute. Okay, I always love the messages coming through, especially the little details sometimes I get a little um, caught up in, but it's really connecting to that aspect of our, you know, feminine energy, the intuition. Oh yes, and then look what's under here is the Eight of Cups, and this is about meditation, so going inward, connecting with your emotions, the Eight of Cups is a really, I don't know, I think it's always kind of a gentle card, but it's also this sense of like adventure and like going in search of something in the traditional card. He's kind of walking away and he's going in search of those little, you know, buried treasures, basically, to find that Nine of Cups where, and the Nine of Cups is like feeling, you know, all your wishes have come true. So the Eight of Cups, you know, teaches you how to go within, you know, and, and to find those things. So connecting with moon energies too, which is also very feminine. And, you know, the cups rep represent, you know, water signs. So Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, all those. So yes, water, you might be called to the water, lakes, even just walking by them or listening to them um, in meditation, like listening to water flowing, um, like I said, drinking lots of water, definitely baths or showers, just connecting with the water in some way. All right, Spirit, what's the overall message for us this week? We got lots of blue too, so I like that. Okay, I love it. All right, we have Hidden Beauty. That's beautiful with number 45 or 9. And this card is like just black and white. Little sketch there. I love that of the body. Okay. You are glimpsing beauty, and yet there is more to be revealed. There is more than what you are currently seeing. To attempt to force the vision would prevent you from seeing what is being revealed. Be patient and look more closely. Soften your heart and ask to be shown the beauty in the situation that is being shown to you. Wait, let the vision come alive, and you shall witness what was once hidden. This oracle brings you a suggestion from divine guidance. You may think you see the whole picture, but if you look deeper, you shall see something that brings you much joy, hope, and reassurance. There is a more beautiful perspective here. 
that affirms and nourishes you and all involved in the situation of your life that are puzzling you at present. Take heed and relax. All is well. All is it is meant to be, and soon you will too, and soon you will too, <laughs> excuse me, and soon you will too be able to see. And this is the poem. When I close my eyes at night, I see your face, your lips, the brush of your hair across your brow, the down of your skin soft against my touch. My love grows in the solitude, listening for the morning light and you. Oh my gosh, that was so beautiful. And it was even called Hidden Beauty. And, you know, we were going in search of that, you know, those buried treasures, those hidden beauties that are deep within you. And the more you, you know, find that beauty within yourself, the more you see the beauty in everything that surrounds you. Even when your, things are, like, falling apart or even if things, you know, aren't, don't necessarily look the way that you want them to look, you know, or that you would prefer them to, you know, you can still feel this sense of, like, happiness and joy. You don't let things that are happening externally steal your love and your joy and your compassion. You stay anchored in that. You know, you stay anchored in your beauty. <laughs> you stay anchored in your love. And then that's what you begin to attract. So even when things, you know, don't go your way, you don't lash out, right? That's kind of like the ego, which would be like the five of swords. <laughs> You learn how to have compassion and see things from you know a different perspective and then it allows for you to see the beauty in the situation and then you transcend any attachments to it and it no longer you know holds you mentally hostage and it frees you emotionally and then you can allow yourself to feel happiness regard happiness and love and joy regardless of what's happening outside of your control so i hope this was helpful for you i hope this was healing for you i do do personal readings so if you'd like to book one you can um, find that information below so i'll be back next week take care